Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, I'd like to run through the latest uh, from our um, engineering team, the latest piece of software that we've created, which really extends the range of our architectural series of loudspeakers. Uh, you've, I've noticed from the people that have joined us so far in the past that we've, uh, we've already covered the DSW 600, uh, which was a great addition to the range. One as an LFE channel and uh, two, obviously, as base extension channel, which has been a really cool concept. A lot of people really taking that idea and running with it. So we have a lot of um, projects that are specified with that uh, base extension mode. Um, HPA is, an, is another um, piece of software that we've created that really gives the architectural series real breadth um, and allows us to perform in much larger rooms. So what we'll do is we'll cover the concepts of this uh, in the first place. So quick summary of how loud do we need to be um, we always talk about sound pressure levels when we're designing cinemas and that's because there are guidelines that we should be uh, hitting when we build these rooms. So the THX reference level is 105 dB at the main listening position. Um, that's also what CDA targets in all of its design guidelines as well. So whenever you use our design and specification service, we'll always give you that 105 dB listening uh, position if it's in a dedicated space. If we're in living room spaces, then 105 dB is probably bit impractical for most people. The environment doesn't really suit that level of SPL. So here we're talking about dedicated theatre spaces. And as you, as you may already know, we actually, one of the few manufacturers to measure all of our speakers, these aren't theoretical um, measurements. We actually play the test tone, measure the loudspeaker uh, and measure the speaker at one metre. Um, and because our amplifier and speaker enclosures never change from installation to installation, we always have a sealed back box. We always have the same amplifiers. Um, that's a measurement that you can use in all of your installations. And the reason we do the one meter uh, measurement is because uh, as you double the distance, you reduce the sound pressure level by six uh, dB. So that means you can tell from how far away you are from the source of the audio to what SPL you should be hitting um, when you're in your main listening position. So just a quick recap, here are the 105 dB numbers um, and also the distance um, that we can hit that 105 dB for a single loudspeaker. This is um, a single DSP320, uh, we're just over one meter. Obviously it's a more compact design um, for its size, that is high SPL, uh, especially when you consider you have uh, bass extension down to 50 Hertz with that speaker as well. As we move up to the 520s, these are more suitable in cinema applications for LCRs. You can see we're hitting just under three meters um, for our 105 dB distance. So for those smaller room sizes, that's a great option. Um, it also in the performance series, we hit four meters uh, with the 640.2, which is again, starting to get into those uh, larger room sizes, maybe four, five or six meter um, depth overall. Uh, reference series, uh, the first one in that range, the 730, 3.2 meters. And then the big boy, the 750, um, hot, very high SPL, 5.6 meters. So that does get us into a decent room size. Um, but the, what happens if the room is larger than let's say seven or eight meters depth? Um, that's where we really need to have higher SPL. Now, typically if you wanna go above 120 decibels at a meter, which is uh, how much a DSP 750 can produce, then we would have to look at using different drive units. We would have to move away from things like those beryllium um, high frequency drivers and we'd need to look at using a compression driver or, or similar. Um, and if you've got experience of using compression drivers, they, they don't have that same um, high frequency extension or clarity that you get um, from something like a beryllium dome. Um, so for us, that's a sacrifice in terms of our um, clarity and detail, which in residential environments, that's not something people will um, usually accept that well. The other thing is typically, if you wanna go louder, you need bigger. So that means a bigger box, a larger number of power amps to drive those bigger boxes. So we're creating more heat in the rack. And we're also making our room smaller by adding maybe five or 600 millimeter um, loudspeakers behind the front wall. So that's something we wanted to avoid as well. So what did we do? Well, we basically went to the engineering team and said, can we have a louder speaker than 120 dB at a meter, please? Um, and this is the solution that they came up with. Now, obviously we have um, DSP in our loudspeakers. That's why they all start with DSP at the start. Uh, it means we've got infinite control over uh, what those drive units do, which give us a lot of pro uh, possibilities. And it means we don't have to use um, compression drivers. We don't need to have a lot of depth and we don't need any additional equipment in the um, rack 
in order to hit these higher SPL numbers. So how loud is a stack? And we'll go through what a stack is in the first place. So effectively with a, a 520.2, if we use the speakers um, horizontally, um, close coupled, so um, a baton in between, so maybe 50 mil in between those, um, um, those speakers, um, we actually hit 122 dB a meter with three and ESP 520s, which means we can do 105 dB all the way out at seven liters. Um, and if we use the higher SPL uh, 640s, um, then we're actually way up to 125 dB at one meter, which means our 105 dB number is 10 meters, which is massive. Um, that puts us in much, much larger rooms. Um, so that's what we can do with the performance series. And if we look at the high res um, series, the reference series, 730s match the uh, 520. So again, 105 dB at seven meters. Uh, but this time with that brilliant tweeter, so we still have um, that high resolution for audio that uh, is so important to us. And again, 750s match 640s in terms of SPL as well. Um, so that's 125 dB at one meter, so 105 dB uh, at 10 meters. So that puts us in a much larger room in the first place. Um, and these speakers now, um, you just have more of them. So we're not asking for any more space uh, in the room. We're not asking for any more space in the rack. We're just giving... Um, those higher SPL numbers. It doesn't come for free. Um, there is a challenge here. So uh, what you'll find is if you close couple and if you look at this, um, the high power array uh, diagram in the bottom corner there, you can see the speakers are really close together. So if you close couple the loudspeakers, um, you will introduce something called comb filtering. So if we look on here, we have volume on this axis and then we have um, frequency on this axis here. You can see at low frequencies, comb filtering is not really in effect. So actually close coupling the loudspeakers really bumps up our low frequency um, output. So the response is the same for each speaker. We have more low frequency energy. But what happens is as we move up into the mid and high frequencies, we get this really uneven looking frequency response. And it sounds exactly like this graph looks like. So at this point, you'll lose a load of mid and uh, mid frequency energy then you'll gain it again, then you'll lose it, gain, lose, gain, lose. And this will vary from seat to seat wherever you're sat within the room. So if you're at the front of the room or the side or the rear, you'll have a different frequency response. So whilst you do get more SPL, you do sacrifice that fidelity that you're after. Um, so what we wanted to do was create a way of using our DSP technology to have us the stacked loudspeakers with high SPL, but we wanted to ensure we didn't have the comb filtering. And what this HPA technology does is create a louder version of the original loudspeaker. So what do three 520s stacked up sound like? They sound like one 520, just much, much louder. Um, so you know you've already installed 520s, 640s, 750s and soon I'm sure 730s. So you know what each one of those loudspeakers sounds like. So you're taking that, that original sound and you're making it much larger. And the HPA technology smooths out any of the comb filtering that we um, would introduce from having these close couple drive units. Now we have actually applied for a patent on this technology. So I'm not gonna tell you exactly how uh, the technology works. Um, but if we look at this drawing here, you can see the base drive is close coupled isn't an issue. The issue is having um, the mid and high frequency drive units. Now, if you, if you think about how our DSP loudspeakers work, we've got a powerful DSP processor and powerful amplifiers built into it. So that means we can change what each loudspeaker's drive units are receiving in order to cancel out the effect of comb filtering. Um, so I'll leave you to, uh, you to imagine that we can change frequency, we can change amplitude, we can change um, um, the, uh, whether it's uh, in phase or out of phase as well, across the entire frequency range. So we have infinite control over um, all of the interactions between these mid and high frequency drive units. And that's what the HPA uh, processing technology takes care of. Um, so this is uh, a quick overview. So you'll notice in here, we've got three loudspeakers um, coupled, um, and this is how, it's, how they're supposed to be installed. So just this 50 millimeter, um, gap if you're using the original RF boxes um, with timber batten in between them. Um, and we recommend using this horizontal approach for the um, 520 and 730, and then vertical for 640 and 750. Um, this will give you optimal dispersion. Obviously, you can see with the um, drive unit arrays on these, these loudspeakers have um, more uh, off-axis dispersion in the horizontal than they do in the vertical plane. 
uh, whereas 520 and 730 is, uh, is basically the same performance. So this gives you a space advantage. So the way we work with this is that we have um, a primary loudspeaker, which we show in the middle, and then we have two secondary loudspeakers. And the primary loudspeaker uh, receives one uh, command via software to enable the HPA mode, and then the secondary loudspeakers receive a, a second code, a separate code, uh, which allows them to be configured in the correct way. So these are the examples of how the, um, the speakers are installed. And then all we need to do is send a command to the two uh, secondary loudspeakers to tell them that they're secondary, and then one for the uh, primary loudspeaker. And that's it, we're done. There's no other setting up that's required. Um, so it's very, very simple. And that command can be sent either via the front panel RS232 three and a half millimeter jack plug, or we can send it via speaker link. Um, so very, very simple to, um, um, to achieve. And when we use the HPA technology, we still have EBA, we still have base protection. Um, so all of the features we have in the single loudspeakers are carried over into the high power array. Um, so there's no change to, um, um, to the performance of the loudspeaker or the feature set of the loudspeaker. Uh, the process is really simple. Um, you do need to tell each speaker individually that it is a primary or a secondary loudspeaker. Um, and as I said before, one will be primary, two will be secondary. And here is all you need to do, and, and we will send this documentation through as well. So you just type the, the command in control window, which is part of the mconfig software package. You type in ARPRI, and that's to tell it it's a primary loudspeaker. And you probably guessed the code AR. SEC to specify that that's the secondary loudspeaker. So you'll enter that code um, into the, um, the two secondary loudspeakers per HPA stack, and then you'll put this into the center channel of the three speakers, um, and away you go. And if you were to want to disable it, there is an off button as well. So if the, the cinema is being decommissioned and the speaker is being used around uh, the home elsewhere, then you'd have the ability to do that as well. Um, and as again, you, you know, if you send the command in the first place to turn the feature on, you'll also need to send the command to turn the feature off. So it's very, very simple. Um, and this feature is available on the 520.2, 640.2, uh, the 730 and the 750. So let's get into the important part. You know, we said how loud they can go. Well, how big can the room get, be? That's probably a useful measure. Um, so if we look at this, uh, this array here, uh, it looks very funny because the screen's huge. The screen's huge because the room's huge. So this room size, around 11 by 6 meters, just under. Um, so a very, very large space. Um, but if we look at the actual numbers, 520 and 730 will achieve 105 dB at 7 meters, which is around the middle row in this huge room. Um, and we'll also have 100 dB in the rear row. So it really does change the room size that we can be used in with these types of configurations. And notice we're not having to build out the wall. We could have a lot more seats in this space as well if we wanted to. Um, we're just observing the, um, the viewing angles that we need to hit. Um, so that's a real game changer. So if we think about a single 520 on its own used in a, used in a um, you know, left center right configuration, room size is more like four or five meters square. Um, so this is a significant size increase and actually quite cost effective as well um, because there's no additional cost for using multiple 520s and there's only a small amount of work required in terms of dropping those two commands into the speakers. So it's a, it's a really cost effective way of filling a room up. And again, you can still offer the clients a high resolution alternative by upgrading the 520s to the 730s. And if we look then at um, the larger system, so 640 or 7. 50 installations, um, the room can be really big, you know, 15 by eight. It's a really, really large space um, to project that audio into. Um, and again, 105 dB at 10 meter puts us in this row here. So that's a serious space to put um, the loudspeakers into, and we still achieve 100 dB in the rear row as well. So what you're getting is all the benefits that you have from using a 640 or a 750 in a, um, in a small room, but in those much, much larger spaces. And this is the reason that uh, we asked the engineers for something that's louder, because we know you guys are working, perhaps not all the time, but you are working in these larger spaces and we wanted to give something um, to you which, which is suitable for that. And so the HPA technology means that we can use our existing range, which you may already have in stock as a distributor, um, and then just use more of them uh, to fill up those large spaces. So there really aren't any drawbacks um, 
to to doing this it's it's a case of um as long as the budget exists to move from you know 640s to 750 if you want that high res um that's really the only limitation is um how much uh, budget's available in the project to whether you can use them or not we also created created uh, which you would have probably seen from the price list a new couple of SKUs. Um, the first is called the mb500 and the mb500 is a simple way of mounting um, speakers on the wall in the hba configuration so you can probably see it's an open cage design um, there are uh, plenty of uh, screw holes on the back of the um, uh, of the mb500 so you can actually bolt that straight into the wall so um, that means that you you don't have to wire it into the mains as you would do with an rf500 um, so you can just use the iec outlet on the speaker go straight into the mains um, wall sockets uh, without any additional wiring so this will save you time um, and you're not having to put a back box physically into a wall um, and this uh, makes it much easier to put the speakers um, close together as well so you can actually even negate the need for a 50 millimeter gap between the speakers you can um, use a spirit level and just get the uh, mb 500s uh, mounted really close to each other so you've got the speakers um, really nice and closely lined up and as you probably guess the mb 500 um, is compatible both 520 and the 730 and these are actually the same price as the um, the RF 500s as well. So you've got that flexibility on the installation side of thing to be able to just use uh, stack three of these up. It will save you guys, um, your engineers time on site as well. Um, it is worth using or creating a, a baffle around that as well. So if you've put those on there, um, either use plasterboard uh, retro on the front or use some acoustic material to create a flat baffle um, that will extend the low frequency performance of the um, HPA as well. Um, and so that's the MB500. Guess what? There's an MB600, uh, which is the exact same feature set as we talked about before. So designed for simple uh, on wall mounting system um, same mounting. So you yeah, just screw this onto the uh, onto the wall directly. Loudspeaker goes straight in. Again, no need to wire in um, the mains. Um, very easy to get the speakers lined up uh, as well. And the MB600 is compatible <clears throat> with the uh, DSP640 and the DSP750. So um, both those are available now. Uh, you can order those when you order um, well ahead of time. So you can order these before you order the loudspeakers so you can get um, the first fix of the installation done um, and they're um, yeah they're, they're ready to go so that's that really is just to save a bit of time and make it easier for the guys on site to uh, install these things basically negate the need for having um, a timber frame around um, the RF 500s or RF 600s. And that's quite a lot of information that we've gone through um, I would really recommend making use of our design and specification service um, we have already specified a number of HPA systems and we actually have uh, one being delivered on Thursday in the US just in time for Thanksgiving, which will be the first delivered um, HPA 750 um, installation, which is cool. We've got another project over in South Africa um, that has um, 750s in a high power array as well. Both those projects, um, they consulted with the design service. So they sent the plans across um, and our team got on that. And we, we worked out the uh, uh, the numbers made sure we were going to hit what we were um, aiming for the whole point of doing this in the first place is that they are designed and engineered solutions um, so uh, yeah feel free to um, get in touch um, and we'll help you specify that we'll probably use a combination of the performance and reference series loudspeakers um, so you can have that upsell opportunity um, with the client as well so if you have anything it's just design at meridian.co.uk uh, so that is the presentation over. I'll um, now have a look, see if we've got any questions. Uh, for those of you that um, joined slightly after we started this, we will be emailing out um, a video uh, of this as well. So you'll be able to watch this at leisure. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, drop me a line.